Happy today. I am William Brown from IamWilliamBrown.com. This is Disconnect to Connect, One Word Conversations. Um, one Word Conversations is brought to you by I am William Brown. And it is a place to be yourself and to live your life. One way that I spotlight the items or the things that are at one um, I am William Brown .com, is to use our U cards and our U cards are in, intention setting cards. And I use them to set the intention for our conversation. So as you are settling in and um, sharing the link and um, putting in the comments of your, your here, I will set the intention for today's show. The intention is I am seen, I am seen, you are enough. And the quote card is it's you I like. It's you I like. It's from Mr. Rogers' um, song. Uh, it's a great song. And so if you go on YouTube and just put that in, and you'll um, hear that song for yourself. And just um, it's a good song to have in your head. So with that in mind, I am going to bring up our word for today, which is uh, interesting. It is bully. Um, and it's, it's an interesting word because it's shown up in my life um, for a number of reasons. It's, um, you know, I felt it, I've, I've felt, I've dismissed it. Um, I've seen it in my work life, my school life, and a lot of different places. And um, there's a lot of different ways that I think it's showing up uh, in our society today. Um, and so with that in mind, I am going to see if my guest is is ready to, to come in. I'm waiting for her to give me the thumbs up so, um, so I can uh, bring her up and we will have a conversation. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am doing great. You know, this is the moment where I um, ask my guests to introduce themselves however it feels comfortable. Hello, I am L. Michelle Jewell. I am an author, motivational speaker, and entrepreneur consultant. Mm -hmm. And I am actually from the Washington, D.C. area, born and raised, but I reside in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm also a radio personality, and I have my own show called The L. Michelle Show. Oh, and, wonderful. Go ahead. And our motto is, you have a voice and it needs to be heard, so let's sit down and talk. Okay. Well, let's sit down and talk here, too. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> so how does the word bully show up for you? The word bully to me, and I, some people probably will agree, is being malicious, vicious, and the, the list could go on. Hmm. And I think when you hear the word, the word bullying, a lot of times it's most likely for, for children, mm -hmm. but it goes deeper than that. It goes all the way up to adolescence, to the young, you know, young adults, to your 20s, your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. It has right. no, no age limit. And no range. And people are so focused to me of um, looking at it just as kids, right. but they don't look at it as being about it could happen to adults. I mean, you guys at the workplace, you guys uh, with the police, not all. Let me let me quote that. Okay. The words I'm saying out of my mouth is coming from El Michelle right. Jewell, not William Brown. Right. Well, and well, we're a conversation. Yeah. Right. But we know that that's happening. Right. And then on transit system, I mean, it's happening everywhere, classrooms at home. And I think it's one of the topics that get talked about and then they, nah, let's just keep it to the side. Right. And I think it, that, that word bully or bullying 
needs to be addressed. I'm 52 years old and I'm still getting bullied. Right. Wow. I, you know, I, I, I really appreciate that. And I, I totally agree that there is so many areas in our life um, that bullying can, can show up. Yes. And, and, I, and I think the reason why for, for me, how it lands for me is that it is not just um, the schoolyard bully, you know, kicking dirt in your and 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 you know in your face and taking your lunch and all that other kind of stuff. I think it shows up um, for me is mockery. Yes, it's like when when we you know, and I think that's I love comedy, but comedy I think is a dying um, art. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, because now what people think is comedy is just mockery, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and and which I believe is a form of bullying. And so it is it is so pervasive through our our culture, our our work, our our lives. We think that we're just saying um you know, speaking the truth or just or, or saying something, and we're just trying to create this dominance over over people, and we're and we're causing people to show up as a victim or a bully. And I think mm -hmm. those are, you know those are the only you know ways that that we show up, and it's hard for us to um, to be in strong, nurturing relationships or even showing up in our work. Uh, mm -hmm. um, when we have this bullying going on or this this way of showing up or people feeling that they have to do that. And so, um, you know, what was really sad about what you said earlier, uh, and then I'll let you talk again so I can put a period on, on my thoughts, mm -hmm. is, is that even though that there are some cops that are showing up as bullies, right, to kind of gain the authority over that, you had to put a qualifier that you don't believe that's all cops. And, right. it's, and I think that is sad because the reality is that we know that that's the truth, but the narrative is that that's how it is for everyone. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's almost um, bully be behavior, right? The group think to say that, Hey, um, if you're going to talk about the police, you're going to have to be on one side or the other. It is, they're all bullies or they're not, right? You know, mm -hmm. and we see that they are, right? You know, and, and it's like that zero sum game, game that we have about each other is causing us to, like I said before, show up as the bully or the victim. Exactly. And, and that is just no way to like live a productive life. And because you also got to realize everybody has, a history. Mm -hmm. If you never ever gotten bullied, I applaud you. But if you have, you need to talk about it because that sets the tone for other people to understand why sometimes if somebody says something, right. that 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 wall, that 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 barrier comes up. And dealing, um, like in the cop situation, I'm hearing now that. They're trying to find a way that they can sit down with the cops right. and have a dialogue. What this is what we want. This is what we right. want to happen. Right. And then this is what we want to hear what y'all want to happen. Then take that and find out. Get rid of the ones. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's making you look bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? So in even with being in bully. I think within the school system, I don't think they take it seriously enough. Right. You right. see, you know, I'm I'm a product of a of a, you know some people are PK kids. Well, I'm a TK. I'm a T kid. I'm a right. teacher's kid. Right. Got and it. when listening to stuff that's going on, you know, it's like how many kids came and said that they were being bullied. Or how many of them came, what did you do? You understand what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of times you'll talk to ones later on and say they didn't do nothing. Right. But yet when I defended myself, I get suspended 
they still at school because I've seen right. a couple of incidents, you know, and I've seen it that some of the kids have taken their lives. Right. I've known some adults that have taken their lives right. from being bullied. Right. I've even attempted because of the hmm. pressure, but I've heard God tell me it's, that I got work for you to do. Right. It's you know, no, I no, I no, I totally get it. And I, I sorry if I, I interrupted uh -oh. you. And I just I just really um there there was something there uh, uh, earlier in you know in the sh the shows I had um uh, a word was adult, right? And what came up in there was a conversation um, uh, about a training that I that I heard, you know, um, like early early March, and it was called um, adult development, um, mm. you know, course. And it, and it was and it it struck me as odd, right? And when I was talking to the person, they were saying that, you know, most of the times people focus on child development and I think that helping people be better children um we specialize in helping adults being better adults you know and I think most of the time and I was like oh I totally get it and I, but most of the times the reason why this child like bullying mentality happens not just in school but in our work and in our relationships is because we're not developing as adults how we to handle things, right? Mm -hmm. So, like you were saying, when when teachers, you know, some teachers um, hear about bullying happening, they just hear it as, okay, this is what happens when you're kids, and you just these are the things that you have to do. You're, they're trying to like respond to it as a kid would respond to it, as they would as a kid, and there has to be an adult response. An adult response is, um, hey, in my opinion, this is about power. This is about dominance. This is about mm -hmm. finding my way, finding my identity. And that the more that um, we can see why this person who is doing the bullying is exercising some dominance over, <laughs> you know, these these people are think then we can deal with that child, then we can deal with that person, then we can deal with the situation so he, they're not inflicting harm or making victims out of, out of people. Exactly. But if, we're, if we as adults are not kind of getting to the root cause of it and saying that, hey, this is what it is, why, why do you feel you need to have dominance over this person? Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that you need to exercise some something? Um, and that you're causing harm to, to this person. And then we can get to that. And I, and I think when you look at what's happening in quote unquote adult situations like work, you know, even, you know, within our politics, the communication is just bullying conversations, not adults talking to solve things. Exactly. And, and it, it just really, it like grieves me that it's like we're in the middle of a pandemic or I don't even know if this is the middle or still at the beginning. Um, and we're dealing with social unrest or, or basically really how we're handling um, racial, how, you know, how we're dealing with each other racially. And we still have quote unquote adults bullying each other. Exactly. You know, and it's just like, come on, let's kind of grow up and deal with this. And it's, and it's hard to do if we're really not addressing what bullying really is. True. True. And, and I've always said to like some of the kids that have gone on and shot up the schools. I, I know they did an adult thing, but when you're interrogating them or questioning them, go back to their childhood, like the la one of the last ones, he still was grieving over his mother's death and he was getting bullied mm. at home and at school. Right. But if you handle him as an adult in the, at the police station, you're right. never going to find out what really happened. Take them back to when they were a kid and then work your way up and you'll find out what the root of the problem is. Right. Because they said he was acting out. They right. said that he was, he was, you know, 
he was acting out. Right. But nobody was paying attention. And that's part of the problem. Even with adults, right. nobody's listening. Oh, right. they're just, they'll grow out of it. Oh, they're just ranting. No. Right. If you call yourself my friend, then you should know that something is like really, really wrong. Right. You know, yeah. I, 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 I really, I, I really uh, believe, um, believe that. I think one part of, you know, this is one of the things that I kind of look to myself and I, and I kind of make it a part in, in our family of discussion is that I don't believe that we manage disappointment, depression, or grief well as a society. No. no. And, and I think, as you were saying, you, we have people, because it reminded me of, you know, uh, something that a therapist said to me um, once that really stuck with me is that we either act things out or we talk it out. You know, which one are you going to do? Right. <laughs> right you know? or, or, or we hold it in or and, we, be or, at, yeah. and be right. that cattle, that, that, that pressure cooker. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and until somebody said that, and boom, you, boom. I'm going to come at you well with, yeah, and I'm coming to get at you well with everything from the past, and right. I'm going to get you for, you're going to be the, the one to take it for the team. And people got to understand that they don't understand that. And then, you know, go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Right. And not, when I say these words, don't go to your pastor. Don't go to your friends because you already know that they got something else going on. Go to somebody that don't know you from Adam or Eve. Hmm. Because sometimes I've seen that church, somebody mentioned it earlier, that church bullying. Hmm. See, they could take what they talk with you and use that. And you, you know, and it might be a good message for everybody else, but I thought we were talking about this in confidential. They didn't right. drop my name, but right. you said you weren't going to talk about it. And I've seen that happen. And church hurt is probably one of the worst hurts that you could ever have and being bullied. Right. You know, that, that that's something that sometimes you really can't come back from. Right. And wonder why a lot of people stop going to church because they do have that motherboard like that we was talking on on um Pat Maduro team. There's church hurt, there's there's all type of hurts, but when you get hurt and stuff from the pastor or somebody from your job or that whispering down the lane. Right. Calling names, that's bullying. And right. you don't know how a person if that's already fragile, you right. don't know how they're going to handle it. And then when they strike out at you, oh, now they're crazy. No, no. You know what you said. And I mean, it's all types of levels. And right. we got to be able to sit down and talk about it. Right. I, I, I wonder if I think uh, it was it was something that was coming up for for me is a big part of getting a handle of, of bullying or how we're relating to each other about being responsible, you know, mm -hmm. or, or is it a, accountable more, you know, cause I'm trying to think because how I unpack accountability and responsibility or responsibility is my ability to respond. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and my accountability shows up as my, ability to be held in account of exactly. and i think with with that is it's it's all about relationships with accountability mm -hmm. and so if i don't have strong enough relationships or if i believe that my relationship um if it's a pastor or if it's a friend or family if if i can't share with them what's going on and know that they're are going to hold me accountable and not just kind of keep me on the straight and narrow, but to have me talk through things, then it will turn into this person is going to have some power over me. Right. Glad and that, that, happens. that, that power or that dominance can quickly turn into bull bullying. And I, and I think in some cases, that um, I'm trying to, this is, this is hot off the presses and that's code for, this is something that sounded good in my head and it's coming out of my mouth and I have no idea if it's gonna make any sense, right? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I, 
<laughs> Just say it. Um, it is. It it is really that I believe as human beings we do not want to be dominated. Right. And I, and, and I think you know when we look at you know I brought this up in a show yesterday about how um, we're dealing with wearing a mask and not wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. For some people you're bullying me to wear a mask, right? you know, instead of trying to save me my life or saving other people's life. And if then that mask is also a, a way to hide and hold an end being bullied and being going through the thing. So that's a two part fold. One's right. taking it off and showing, and the other one is hiding and saying, I, I'm just not, I just gonna, I'm gonna go worry about it. I'm just gonna suppress it. I just, you know, right. just take it. And and wow. so how can how can we um, mask and unmask at the same time so we can get the healing, can get the understanding to to take responsibility, to be be held accountable, and not being dominated or feel like we are being bullied into something? And I and I think my living beyond the labels conversation is I don't believe that I'm bullied by my labels. However, I believe that I, um, if I, if I'm not aware of my label, what label is showing up for me, how I'm showing up, let's just say like today, my entrepreneurial label showed up very strong front and center that, Hey, these are the things this Monday, you got to be productive type of thing, type of thing. I could either say that, Oh, my, um, my entrepreneurial label bullied me into doing all I think I need to do. And I could have been stressed out about all today mm -hmm. or what I did was say, Hey, I get it. That it's Monday. I want to be pos I, I want to be productive and positive and have a great week. However, I choose to have a day of ease so I can get stuff done. And so that kind of changed the way I showed up today and not allow that way of being to dictate or bully me into being um, a certain way today because I could have been, you know, I got a, I got a lot on my calendar today and it's just like, you know, I'm just going to just, just knock it out. And it's just like, no. Um, and I think the more that we're able to help kids, right? kind of manage their feelings and how, how things are showing up and manage ourselves so we don't feel bullied or dominated over something, then there's a free expression of ourselves. And so, so there is, I think that's the same work for the bullier who has that label and the victim that mm -hmm. has that later. It is like, hey, um, stand up for yourself. Exactly. This is, this is, this is, you don't have to take this. Use your um, voice. Right. Use and, your voice. And to the bullier, it is, there's another way of, you know, of communicating with people of trying to dominate this because of whatever you're dealing with. And That's I think true. too often, I believe we, we kind of hold people, we, we, we kind of, not recognize within the completeness of our life that we all have, I'll speak for myself, I can be a bully, period. And the more that I own that, the more that I can make different choices so I don't show up as a bully, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But if I act like, oh yeah, I can never be a bully, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. You, you know, and and then I'll look at places where I'm trying to dominate the situation, and so it is just really um, there's 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 hope, but at the same time, I feel like there is um, there's this resignation that I have that people are just. Uh, we just turned, we have just turned into a bully culture. It yes. feels like overnight. And it's oh, like, yes. okay, because if I'm, I'm bullying for a good reason, really, you know, there's no good reason to kind of, no. to do that. And especially when you don't know what somebody has gone through. Right. And it's not also just help. Like I said, it's not just also helping kids 
we also have to acknowledge the adults too, because I remember one time on one of my shows, actually my first show, um, I talked about bullying Mm -hmm. and the station owner still is amazed how they were talking about the kids were being bullied. They were talking about they were bullied and they were the bullier. Right. And he was shocked that somebody would actually admit to that. Right. And he was, then I think it was a question like, well, how about you? And I was like, look, I ain't gonna lie. I got some male cousins. Yep, I'm bullying them because what you did to me as a kid, but it's playful bullying. But yeah, I'm going to harass you. So (laughs) there is a difference. But when you're in the workplace and you got hired to do the job and you constantly got somebody either micromanaging you, just nagging, bullying, they're going to threaten to take, do this and do that. We got to be strong enough. Yes, we got to have the money to, to, you know, feed our families. But you should not be in a hostile workplace right. where when you go to do a complaint and they do nothing, right. then that means it's time for you to really try to find another job. Right. And then when you go on these interviews, you interview them. Don't just let the people interview you. And that's wherever you go. Right. Because you want to know what is the, um, the percentage of complaints for harassment and bullying. If right. those numbers are high, that means that the workplace ain't doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, so there's always levels, but you got to speak. You can't hide it any longer. And now that everybody's home, y'all better start talking to these kids and talking to these teenagers because even here in Charlotte and DC or every city, there are our babies are dying. Right. Our grandmothers are dying. You know what I'm saying? Our, our youth, it used to be a three code. You don't shoot children. You don't shoot adults. Mm. I mean, the women, and you don't shoot the grandparents, the elderly. Mm. And I guarantee you this, you know, it's most of the time it's gang related, but even that's a bully to right. be in that. You know, right. so there's all different levels, but you got to be willing to talk about it, be transparent, and not be afraid to, to say, I've been bullied, I've been a bullier, but this is what I did. I right. went and got help. I talked about it because one of the best therapies is talking about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I, I, I think there's there's a couple things, and I, I, I really ap- appreciate it. There's a couple things that I want to go back and kind of bring mm-hmm. back in this conversation in, in the sense that you, you said about your... Um, you have some playful bullying and harass and harassing um, of your um, what cousins or brothers yeah, or yeah, I can't right, right, some, right. Yeah, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. right and 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 I you know I get it and I don't get it so I'm so right. I'm just trying to ask I'm I'm asking for for clarification so okay it is it do you think that I guess retribution for how they treated you is a place that you want to stay in, even in a playful um, state, because it could, I, because I can, I have some, some brothers um, and, and, and a couple of sisters that sometimes when we get together, you know, our um, child, um, our childhood comes up even at, you know, 40 and fifties, right. You know, you know, come up, <laughs> um, and then it gets to the point where it was playful, and then it is like it's okay. Wait a second, right? you know, you know <laughs> that kind of hit somewhere. Where are we? Where are we going? You know, and then I will, you know, someone, but typically me, it's like okay, we done now, right? You know. <laughs> oh, so you were the mediator in the family when right, the stuff yeah. went down. Oh, 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 oh yeah, <laughs> it, it's like you know, cut it, you know, because. What what was the thing? Um, I forget what it was. Um, you know how when you uh, oh, crap, I can't remember. I, I didn't do it a lot, so that's why I can't um, um, uh, remember the the phrase of it. But it's like when you're saying like um, I don't want to say when you're saying like horrible things about someone in a playful way. What is that? What is that called? Right? You're right. Um, you're taunting. You're teasing. Uh, no, uh, it's, it wasn't teasing. I forget. I forget what it was. It'll probably come to me after the show. But I mean, um, but it there is 
that you know there was that sense of a playful um going back and forth that it was fine until it wasn't fine mm -hmm. um, and i and i think there has been some times in in my childhood and in work environments where you think that you have the space to you know be this passive aggressive making fun of something mockery um, type of thing, but then it's not playing anymore. Now right. it's, it's, it's turned into something else. Um, and, you know, and I was called at the time as, you know, as a kid that, you know, oh, you're just too sensitive. Cause I was just like, dude, uh, no, that ain't funny. And it's like, no, just, you know, play, play along. And you're, you know, you're, I'm trying to toughen you up, you know, type of thing. It's like, no, I'm pretty tough right now, but that was very hurtful. What you just said, right? you know, you know, type of thing. Um, so it is, it is that type of of thing that I just really felt that even at a young age, I didn't want to put up with um, that behavior from my relatives or people are, are my friends mm -hmm. and call it playing, you know, right. um, and, and type of thing, because that, look, I believe that we are, um, we train each other how to uh, train others, how to treat us. Right. Right. Um, and, and so even though I'm not, um, I don't want to get into blaming a victim type of thing, mm -hmm. But I do believe that how I show up sometimes gives people are basically gives people the license to feel that they can treat me any type of way. Sometimes when I felt that I was being nice and then people would kind of feel that, oh, OK, he's nice. I'm going to do this to see, you know, how far we can go. And then it's like, wait a minute now. Um, <laughs> Something's wrong here. Right. Wait, Some, wait, wait. Something's something's wrong, and then trying to make you feel bad to you know because you, now you're not nice anymore. You're, you're not being nice to them, and I think that it felt like in it, like I said that pressure or that dominance that happens that causes it you know me to feel like now you know what I can't be too nice anymore. Or, you know, right. people try to take advantage. Because they abuse, yeah, they take advantage and they, they abuse it. But like with on my hand, like I was telling you earlier, um, I have uh, cousins that are uh, a little younger than I am, about three, four years old, and they used to, you know, I'm an only child, so hanging out with a lot of the boys, and you know, I'm on, the, you know, I say I'm an undercover tomboy. Right. So when they would bring that Joan out. And I got cousins now that, that are in their forties and fifties, and all I got to do is this, right. and they jump, and they're like, "Oh, what them? Ooh!" But they were like, my mom were like, "Well, you let her catch you off guard." And I've been doing it since I was little. To now, they full grown adults, and all I got to do is this, and they jump. And they were like, <laughs> "Ooh!" One day, and the kids like, "Really, Dad?" <laughs> I mean, you scared you, of it, right? <laughs> you, 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 you go, you know, you scared. Like, see what you done done for my kids? I was like, well, you should have better control. You know, all I'm doing is this. <sighs> you did it again. So it's just, to me, it's that's just part of our trade of our family. But you do have some that will take it a hundred steps past right. that. Right. And then it turns out to be. But there are different levels. All families and friends go through different things. But right. at the end of the day, you know, like you say, time to grow up, right. time to realize what's going on, make that change. Right. Um, and realize, you know, maybe that you are hurting somebody. You right. don't know what other people are going through like that day. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, it's almost like you got to pick your battles, but then you got to check yourself. Right. And if you don't do that, then you're going to continue thinking, oh, that's a good pattern, and not hearing people say, look, what you right. did back then is still, I haven't gotten over it, and I ain't forgot. And that's how sometimes right. some people snap and they do things. So you just got to know 
your limits. You got to know when to stay in your lane. You got to know if you about being around that person or that, you got to know when the cross, the line is being crossed or right. you're tapping the line that's going to take them to the next level. And I think if more people will talk about it, right. share with them and say, look, I need to talk to you about something. You know what you did to me back then? This is how bad it hurt me that I had to go through it within the workplace. I carried it into relationships. I carried it into new friendships. And I just want to let you know that I love you. I don't hate you, but I hate your ways of what you did. Because, you know, hate is murder. But I hate your ways. Right. Can you please stop? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. That's no longer funny no more. And just saying, I don't condone the violence. But if I hit you, <laughs> I think you're going to get the point. You know what I'm right. saying? There might be but more you don't want to come to Right. right. You, you, you're you going to get the message that I'm not playing anymore. I didn't do it back then, but I got better control of myself. But if you keep doing it, you know, I might just have to pop you. Then right. do you get that I'm saying to you, like, stop. Right. So, I, I mean, it's a great, it's a, it's a 50 50 line and it's right. a thing. But when it comes down to the, being bullied and, 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 be, and being the bullier, somebody has to say, look, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Right. I didn't realize that it was hurting me, you know, and I had to go to therapy because right. it affected me throughout my life. Right. And I didn't handle it, but now I'm handling it. So I'm strong enough now to say to you, well, what you said to me when we were kids and what you kept doing while we were going to school and blah, 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 right. that hurt. Right. And it, I had to finally at this age say, I finally got my, my life together, but I had to go through the processes of all that. You know how you say in a relationship, carrying all that baggage? Well, right. I had to carry all that baggage of what happened to me. One, it wasn't my fault, right. but I need you to understand that hurt. Right. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm really getting that. And that's what this, um, uh, you know, disconnect to connect is all about. And one word conversation is that um, one word can cause a connection or a disconnection. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's and, you know, it's, they say action speaks louder than words, but words hurt. Right. They you don't know? understand. <laughs> right. You know, and and it's like there is something that you would think that it is um, very benign or very something that doesn't mean much for you that really will cause someone to alter their life. Yeah. And will cause a disconnection with you and will cause a hurt and a pain and will cause them to show up as a bully or someone that hey, I've lost power within this. Now I have to gain power or, or something. And, 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 I, and I think that the more that we are willing to have these, these type of conversations mm -hmm. to, to do, like you were saying, it's like, look, you know, this may sound crazy or odd or you might not even remember, but when you said this to me, it really hurt me. It really caused me to um, to want to distance myself from you or to really want to do something or cause pain for me. And the more that we can talk through this or not, I mean, because look, there's a number of relatives that I have that I've had to love from a distance because their behavior, right? You know, yep. <laughs> or because yep. how they occurred to me, I still love them. But I ain't talking to them, right? right exactly. Know? Or right, just be know? very short, right? right? You know, very short. And, and well, on top of that, it's not just you know your workplace, your friends. A lot of times, it's your family, right? The closest to you, right? The, the closest to you. And for me, I had I've been here in Charlotte six years. Well, moved to North Carolina six years. I've been in, um, in Charlotte. Well, six years. I literally had to make a choice of either living or dying. Hmm. And I had I had a very bad divorce that carried over well family already was just partially dysfunctional. I'm gonna say hundred percent, but it, it was partial. 
Right. On top of the divorce that, that ended within going through stuff through the bike community, adding all those three things, then into the Masonic order, carrying that over into two things to a point where I literally just packed my truck up, left my home. Right. That and I tell you by my home meaning that my birth certificate says Washington, D.C. And I was raised in Southern Maryland. The folks that were doing the bullying, I guarantee you, their birth certificate says another state. And you just been here for a few years. I have roots. I can, I have the roots in the dirt, but I had to leave my home in order for me to live. Right. Got and it. then once I moved and literally had nothing in this apartment, God had given me a reality check that I actually had to leave. Mm. On top of my marriage, that was another story. But the compounds of all of that, I felt that I was dying, that I could not survive. And I had to leave my home in order for me to be where I'm sitting with you now. Right. Or the, the, the three books that I collaborated in the, new, in the new book that's coming out, too, that I couldn't do that back home. I was right. around the stuff. But I, until I moved, I said, you know what, Lord, one, I'm going to trust you, Mm -hmm. forget the rest of them. And now I'm stepping into what my destiny was, what I love doing is helping people, making sure, you know, my voice was silent for so long. Now you can't shut me up. I'm not going to drop names, but I will, you know, mention something that they're going to know who it is. You know what I'm saying? Just because. I had no escape. And I tell anybody, if you at a point where I don't want you to completely leave your home and stuff like that, but there are alternatives to where you can go get help. Right. You know what I'm saying? Instead of holding it in, because I can't tell you how many times of being talked about and dogged out and everything from not just family, friends, you know, people in the bike world community, you know, just the Masonic all those combos and the divorce that I literally, I can't tell you how many times I thought about it. Right. Thought about taking my life and in it and thought it'd be better. And then hear a pop and say, God be like, let me show you something. So I replayed everything. And I was like, well, I guess you're right. Let me not think about that. Cause I got work right. to do. Right. Well, I, I mean, I, I, um, you know, I totally, I totally get what, what you're saying. And I appreciate um, that sharing because you know, when I, I went through some things and I say, you know, I've, I said to myself, sometimes when you go through the fire, you still smell like smoke. So you want to go to another environment to get the smoke off you. Right. You know, mm-hmm. it's not burning anymore, but there you still smell the smoke and you kind of feel like, you know what? I don't want to smell the smoke anymore. And you kind of go somewhere else. So I, I, I totally get it. And we, you know, I, I think we could talk about this for hours, but um, <laughs> no. um, because there is so many ways that. Um, I, I I think that we can show up as the bully or the the victim, mm-hmm. and and I and I and I and I really get that there's another way, right? Um, there's another option is to be yourself. Yeah, and, and I think that's what living beyond our label is. It is really finding you. Um, and the, when you find yourself, then all the books that you have, all the things that you have, all the things that, um, you have to say, you know, comes up within that. Um, yeah. is there any last thing? I mean, we've said a, a, a lot here. I, I'm going to have to look at, uh, watch this, sh- this show again, but is there anything that's come up that you want to, to leave everybody with or kind of encourage people in? Yes. Um, I want you to know that being a bully doesn't mean that you want, like you said, being a victim. You can actually be a survivor. Hmm. Start using your voice. Like for me, I'm using my voice and my platform. So I kind of got a lot of the folks kind of nervous, <laughs> but whether I'm going to talk about them, but it's, it's, it's something when you start talking and using your voice, how you will start to release some of the stuff 
that at, at the end of the time, you will be able to go back to some of those folks and say, because I have a few people that, that were bullies, and I want to say thank you. Because hmm. of you, I'm where I'm at now. Hmm. And because of you, I decided to live and not die. Hmm. So I thank you for being a bully, being a hater, because the more you hate, the more I'm going to keep going. And hmm. I'm never going to stop. And um, I got a new project that's coming out. Um, Wake Up Winning, Volume 2, Losing is Not an Option. Hmm. And that is allowing folks to that want to become you know, entrepreneurs or they want to start that business or, or if just any of them dreams right. and giving them the courage to uh, move forward and right. live those dreams. And then that even goes in with what's going on too. If you're being bullied, you're victimized, being domestic, all that stuff, you can live and you can be a winner and op losing is not an option. Right. You understand? Wow. And they got to understand that. And the more, and I appreciate you having me on the show, but the more we talk about stuff like that, mm -hmm. somebody's going to get it. They're saying, and I want y'all to look in the mirror and say, I am a winner. I am a survivor. I will no longer, and I believe in me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I am not going to lie. And that's encouraging yourself. Right. Every day, people that work in the office atmosphere, whatever you're doing, you got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? Today is not the day. Day is our day. Right. Once you pray to God and do your meditation or whatever higher power that you believe in, put yourself in that mode and be positive because what you give out is going to come back. Right. So just make that, you know how to say, make it a great day, but make it a day that's great for you. They'll see it. And they were like, oh, I ain't going to touch that today because she extra happy today. <laughs> you know, so, but that extra happy day means I might be getting you that day. Right. But <laughs> just, you know, you have to believe in yourself. And you have to encourage yourself. You have right. to admit, even if you have a conversation in the mirror, you know what? I was bullied in high school, elementary, this and that. But look at me now. Right. Because if you listen to my guarantee, if we had listened to those bullies and, or those naysayers, we we would not be right now talking. Right. We would be, sure. you know, we were showing them, and we actually literally the folks that did something to us. We, you know, God says, "Revenge is mine," say the Lord, and I always say this: that that little that little percentage, boy, we got them sweating because they don't know we're gonna talk about them. They don't know we're gonna write them in the book. But guess what? Write the book. If we write the book, you're gonna, you know, read it and buy it because we're gonna take your money. Watch our shows because we love you, Ray, but you should be just a little bit nervous. Did I talk about them? Did I bully them? Did I, was I mean to them? Watch our show. It's not about you. We're going to drop names, but we're going to we're gonna talk about our hurts. So I want you to sweat just a little bit because the Lord got the rest. <laughs> but watch us shine. You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the best revenge is, is just talking about how we can help people, but we got people right. thinking, did I do it? And how can I come out of it? Right. Well, thank you very much, Elle Michelle. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> um, we'll say our goodbyes in uh, in the green room. But this is this has been great. I really um, I really ap appreciate having you on, and I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Oh, most definitely. I really appreciate it. I'm so proud of you. Um, keep on doing what you're doing, making a difference to other people. Um, you never know the people that you bring on. You're setting yourself free mm. um, and you're helping other people because we never know who's watching. And if, you know, anybody want to talk more with me about some stuff like that, you can reach me at L, uh, Michelle Jewel at Gmail or www.lmichellejewel.com. Uh, right. And everybody, if you don't get on his show, you're missing it. <laughs> well, I love you. you and have a blessed day my friend and uh, I'm so proud you of too. you thank you very much I, I appreciate it oh wow uh, I think I, I need her to do my commercials <laughs> since they're all <laughs> since they're all uncomfortable for me but um, but no I, I, I think you know bully shows up first for me it shows up in my head you know 
And it's like, you, you know, I think the more that I stop bullying myself, right, the more that I um, will don't even consider bullying other people. Um, how does bully show up for, for you? I mean, there's a, a number of, of areas that, that we talked about and that we that we shared that really kind of got me, you know, thinking. And it's and it feels like it is, you know, it's it's a label, it's um it's about power, it's about all those those things. But the more that we had it get it head on, the more that um, we can show up uh, differently for um for ourselves and others. Um it is my prayer that this um, conversation has brought value to you. And I invite you to uh, reach out to me at IamWilliamBrown.com um, so we can have a, a complimentary uh, coaching session um, so um, we can see how you're showing up and see if there's uh, any way that, that I can help you. Because the world wants you, the world needs you, and the world is waiting for you. So go be you. Have a great rest of your day and see you tomorrow.